Well, 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 we are freaking back with another video. Um, first of all, um, the new type of content that I'm going to post will be delayed because I'm not feeling well. Um, I'm still go to school, but I, I'm not feeling well. Okay, I, I'm kind of sick. And that's why um, my voice kind of changed because um, I'm kind of sick. And um, I hope I don't get cold later on. So yes, guys, I'm just making this video for you guys, you know, for for the viewers because we're growing. We're making or growing my community, and I love you all of you. And today we're reacting to how did Germany plan to conquer the world in World War One by uh, no knowledge. Yeah. So, I saw this video and I just wanted to make a video about it because it's interesting, you know? Um, we're in like, we're in this World War I topic. It's been like a few week, days now or like it's been a few weeks and every video that I posted is about World War I. And I promise you guys, next video will be uh, another episode in our reaction series in uh, the Pacific War, okay? I'm still continuing that series. Just you wait and the new content will come soon, okay? So before we start, like and subscribe. We are still growing and comment down below anything that you guys know about World War One because I'm reading comments and the comment that I liked last video was this or uh, I don't know if I'm going to show it, show it, but hey, it's this. I hope I show it. I hope I have time. So yes, let's go react to how did Germany plan to conquer the world in World War One? Many monarchs and political leaders have likely thought at one point or another about the idea of conquering the world. We've seen empire after empire, empire throughout history aim to expand their territorial the claims empire, and diplomatic influences as far the as they Mongol possibly could empire. around the globe. A handful have even found great success, such as the gargantuan British Empire, which at one point yeah, possessed wow. Look at that. Okay, hold on. authority covering roughly 25% of the world's land surface. Okay, first of all, um, that's that's huge. Like, uh, is this Canada? Um, is this Guyana? Is this I, I don't know. Um, oh, I forgot what this what country is this. Um, this too is this Guinea? This is Nigeria? Um, I forgot what country this is. This is Egypt. This is like Sudan. Or there's gonna be like some Tanzania maybe some parts of um, Mozambique or Zimbabwe um, some part of uh, what you call that um, DPR uh, DR Congo um, we have here uh, I don't know how much um, we have some parts of Yemen and Oman and the United Emirates and Qatar I'm very very sorry um, we have the British Raj um, we have Malaysia and Australia and don't forget uh, New Zealand I hope I hope New Zealand was part of this yeah so, yeah no the Union Jack is like in the upper left corner in the flag so yeah New Zealand Empire or other world's player has been able to rule over the entire globe but that didn't stop others from trying to gain more influence Imperial Germany was one of those ambitious empires. The Germans just united in the second half of the 19th century and gained vast respect from the rest of the continent and the world as a scientific and industrial superpower, racking up 20 Nobel Prizes between 1901 through 1918 alone, spanning the categories of medicine, chemistry, physics and literature. The year before the outbreak of World War I, Imperial Germany also boasted the largest economy in continental Europe and placed only third behind the United States and the British Empire on the world scale. With a That's 
fa that's phenomenal. Like it's pretty. Uh, um, I already know this. Um, the German Empire was was like this new superpower that is rising up in Europe, and um, that's why uh, there there's like the Triple Alliance. Was it Triple Alliance? I forgot. Um, the Entente, the uh, British Empire, um, or Russia. Oh uh, yeah, Russia and France and the British Empire, just to uh, put keep the keep Germany at bay I, I hope I use that word right um, I don't know I don't know much I've, I'm sick right now so yes the robust military and rapidly prospering home status the German Empire was ready for even more success and power and that is exactly what they would aim to take 1914 the First World War erupts. Imperial Germany, a longtime ally of the Austro-Hungarian Empire since the establishment of the Dual Alliance in 1879, was quick to enter the conflict on August 1st with its declaration of war on Russia and shortly dragged France into the dispute with a second declaration on August 3rd. Per the Germans' pre-established war plan, Russia was not actually a primary focus and Germany instead invaded Belgium, triggering Great Britain to declare war on the Germans only one day after the second German declaration That's kind of, of war. A mistake. Mm. This explosion of discord triggered the start of Imperial Germany's infamous Schlieffen Plan. Yeah, that's, that was the infamous Schlieffen Plan, and that was kind of a mistake um, invading Belgium. Um, Austria Hungary, the reason why it's their. Uh, I actually was actually watching a video. Um, I forgot what video that was. Um, Austria, Austria, Ham the Hungarian Empire has this, like this state types, and um, the only thing that holds the the empire was um, it was uh, I forgot what she called that. Um, this this empire was actually getting controlled or getting led by the Habsburgs um, I don't know much about this but I heard it's it's like the Habsburg ha Habsburgs um, I have to look that up later I'm sick so very sorry and um, they they could I don't know what word should I use about this but also Hungary has different types of ethnicities and um, type of people and uh, they, they have like obviously the Hungary they have Austrians uh, mm, I forgot the others god damn it oh god uh, we have some parts of Croatia was it some part of Croatia right uh, I, I don't know um, yeah they're not they have a, a lot of different ethnicities while the German Empire they're strong because the people inside the country is reunited except for the Eastern Hungary because they have to have this I uh, forgot what you call that but it's like you have to please the two type two parties like they have like different type of people and if if this this type group wants to do this and uh, what you want something to happen so you have to have two the two groups or the groups agreeing to it and, and that just makes it worse and that's why some um, that's why also Hungary wasn't that strong in World War One and I have to learn more about Austria Hungary I'm pretty interested in learning more so comment down below anything about Austria Hungary so yes which later earned its name from the prominent German field marshal Alfred von Schlieffen. This meticulous design had actually been devised almost a decade prior and was meant to be a plan to win a large-scale war, particularly against the French Third Republic. The strategy was to cross through Belgium and Luxembourg instead of directly into France through its shared border with Germany and create a decisive victory by attacking the French flank 
and rear. The offensive would be split into a right wing, center, and left wing. The German first, second, and third. Mm. I'm not going to pause that much because I already explained some of it and um, this video might take like so long to record because of the length so yeah oh what the heck I'm sorry I just I'm sick right now oh my god Wing, with the left wing consisting of the sick okay okay geez that that took a while um i'm sorry that was a pause and, and seventh yeah. armies and the center rounding out the strike with the fourth and fifth armies the assumption of the germans was that this plan could be executed fairly quickly in an estimated six weeks or so and that the russians would be slow enough in mobilizing their own troops that a smaller german defensive would be enough to hold off their eastern enemy in the meantime in the case that the Schlieffen plan worked exactly or well enough as expected, Imperial Germany's next move would be to execute the September program, which was an even more extensive plan for German expansion. September plan? This second plan was created at the start of World War I by Chancellor Theobald von Bethmann Hollweg's private secretary, Kurt Reisler. This new set of goals established a bold plan for German expansion in and outside of the European continent and would have been the start of immense growth for the empire. The September program was scheduled to go as follows. First, the Schieffelin plan would result in a definitive victory for Germany and France would be forced to give up chunks of their territory up north and along Belgium. the Dunkirk coast. France would also pay war reparations totaling 10 billion German marks in addition to paying off Germany's national debt, subsequently wrecking the French economy. Next, France would also be forced to destroy its own northern forts in an effort to partially disarm itself. Furthermore, oh wait wait wait, so destroying their their northern ports, um, like this military and this stuff, that sounds very familiar. Not, not, I know, but demilitarizing the the Rhineland, um, after World War One in the uh, Treaty of Versailles, was it called Rhineland? Um, I, I forgot. Forgot. Yeah, it was a Rhineland. Yeah. Huh, that's, um, familiar. Belgium would at minimum be annexed by Germany or in another case become a German vassal state whilst also seceding certain eastern portions of its territory and providing military bases for Germany. Luxembourg would then become a member state of Imperial Germany. Luxembourg. The Russian Empire's lands would be re-established with some buffer states. Ah, yes. In the what if they talked about the uh, puppets, the puppet states, like United Balt, United Baltic Duchy. Uh, sure, Lithuania, Poland, Belarus, and um, Ukraine. Okay. Such as Poland and other territories in the east being formed under German authority. Belgium, France, the Netherlands, Denmark, Austria-Hungary, the buffer states, as well as potentially Sweden, Norway, and Italy would create a new economic association wow. completely dominated by the German Empire. Wow. Germany would massively expand its colonial power, particularly by seizing French and Belgian colonies in Africa and aiming to gain a okay, large... Okay, we saw this from um, Alter History Hub. Co Germany connecting their colonies. You know what? By looking at this type of connection, sure, they can connect this. Uh, they can... I, I'll agree with this, but in, uh, in Alter History Hub's video, the German colony in Africa was far more, far more bigger than this and i was kind of skeptical if they're going to do that but by looking at this even though it's still huge it's pretty decent because knowing that Fra france and britain hmm. 
larger influence in the region than the British, while opting to not necessarily take any British possessions. Lastly, the Netherlands must voluntarily come into a closer union with Imperial Germany. In reality, what actually happened was more than a small disappointment for the Germans. Chiefly, the Schlieffen Plan failed. For one thing, the speed at which the Germans intended to advance on France was unobtainable, and the enemy forces put up a better fight than had been anticipated, which stalled the German troops even further. There was also mistakes made throughout the execution of the plan, and it finally resulted in a withdrawal. The strategy seems genius on paper, but ultimately flawed in actuality because it relied on perfect and unrealistic execution that simply could have not been achieved in the heat of war. The result of this failure meant that Germany was now unable to enact the September program and instead got the one thing they wished to avoid. A, a two-front war. Yeah, that's, that's gonna suck. Two-front war. The Russians had mobilized... Because having, having two fronts to fight in, that's, that's gonna suck. If you play... Um, what you call that? Hoi 4, uh, Hearts of Fire 4. Um, I played it once and I tried to be, uh, I tried playing, uh, Germany and, uh, I did some mistakes there and, um, it got myself into a two foot war and lost. <laughs> I lost severely. So, um, yeah had mobilized their troops more rapidly than the Germans planned for, which meant that they would be facing off with the one minimal army that had been left to defend Germany from the east. Troops from the west had to be diverted, and all of Imperial Germany's hopes of expansion were rapidly dissolving as they became deeply entwined in an uphill battle that they had expected to avoid. The quick victory that the Germans had planned for was now a dream of the past, and so was the September program. This wasn't the German Empire's first time failing to obtain a goal they had set for expansion and conquest, though. Kaiser Wilhelm II Kaiser made plans Wilhelm. to invade the United States back in 1897 oh. through 1903. Even if this plan was unrealistic, his goal in this instance was not necessarily to conquer the United States, but instead to weaken the country economically and politically so the Germans could install their own, more powerful influence over the Caribbean, South America, and Pacific Oceanic regions oh. instead. The idea was considered by various junior officers, and different versions of a plan were made, three specifically known simply as Plan 1, Plan 2, and Plan 3. Hold on. Plan 1, it was made by Lieutenant Eberhard von Monte in 1897-1898 and targeted mainly American naval bases in Hampton Roads to reduce and constrain the U.S. Navy and threaten the U.S. capital. Plan 2, after the Spanish-American War in 1998, the plan was about to our land invasion of New York City and Boston considered the heartland of the USA. Plan 3, 1901, the German naval attache in Washington, von Rebor Paschwitz, reported to the German Admiral Tirpitz, Tirpitz that two attacking forces should be landed at two points at in, 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 to encircle Boston. Also, the idea of obtaining naval bases in Puerto Rico was considered. Oh. But nothing could be solidified, and the scheme was eventually abandoned in 1906 without even a single attempt at execution. Damn. Essentially, in the best-case scenario, Germany would have at one point or another expanded its empire across Europe and the surrounding continents. The goal of the Imperial Army was widespread influence and dominion, and had things gone differently in the First World War, it's very possible that the September program would have been only the start of Germany's conquests. Though there was no immediate or clear plan for world domination, 
Imperial Germany's schemes intending to expand not only through Europe, but in their African colonies as well, was an ambitious aim, and more likely than not, would have been step one, not the final step. Oh. Still, European dominion and growing colonies proved possible, but Imperial Germany simply fell short after the failure of the war plan in the West. The German Empire had great potential for gaining more and more influence, and that was even more visible in the Second World War. But during the first one, the Imperial power crumbled, and their global dreams shattered with them. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Wow, that was fascinating. Um, it's like a what if, or it's just how did yeah, it's just like how did Germany plan to conquer the world? That was fantastic. That was fascinating. It was a pretty interesting one. And um, thank you for watching. Uh, this video is just like 22 minutes now, and um, I'm just kind of sick. So thank you for watching, like and subscribe. And um, if you want to be part of this community, subscribe and obviously like the video. And I hope you guys uh, do well in life because um, right now I'm sick <laughs> again. Um, I'm trying to entertain you folks and um, I'm kind of boring because um, I have I'm pretty sick right now and I hope in the future uh, I will post you get a very professional or let's say very well-made video for all of you so thank you goodbye